Hello and welcome to this video on resistance soldering. First of all, let's talk about what is resistance soldering. It is basically a technique that generates heat by passing a very low voltage but very high current through the items that you're soldering together. This generates heat because of the resistance of the items you're soldering and that heat can be used to melt the solder and generate the joint. It is slightly different to the traditional irons that use heat to make the parts hot. Um, this one uses voltage and uh, but an awful lot of current, high amps, in order to do it. Now the benefits of resistance soldering are several. First of all, you get very local heat at the point of where you're soldering. And so this is really useful because it doesn't desolder any joints that are close by. So when I'm making my sculptures, I've got a lot of joints I've already done. If I want to add another one in, then resistant soldering is a really good benefit there. Um, the heat is very quick to, to generate and it also cools down very quickly. So again, that's really good for local heating where, where you just get in it exactly where you want it. I find it's also cleaner than the traditional iron and the heat is pretty much instant on demand. So I've got a foot switch and as soon as I press the foot switch, the power starts, the, the, as in the circuit is made, the power starts and the heat comes immediately at that point. And the last benefit therefore is that you kind of get a third hand. So by holding the probe onto the joint before you put the current there, you can, you can hold the copper wire still put the heat on with your foot and put the, put the current on with your foot and this will hold the joint together and hold it still whilst you just feed in the solder with the other hand and then once you once you can see the joint has been made you take your foot off the pedal continuing to hold this but it will keep the copper still whilst it cools down about two three seconds later it's cold you can take the you can take your hand away and you've made the joint so let's look at the equipment that I use. I have a Frost B280 carbon resistance soldering tool that I bought. It cost me about a hundred pounds about two years ago. And I believe they still said it and you can buy it online. That is the transformer that takes the 230 volts from UK mains and transfer, transforms it all the way down to just the six volts. Out of that comes the two wires, the red and the black. Now they feed into the probe and the clamp. The, the red wire comes into the probe and this is a very lightweight probe that you hold. And on the end of that, you have the carbon tip. Now the carbon tips that came with the original unit were very small and I found that they were wearing out very quickly. I've got a little bit left here. So they're quite small and they weren't they, they seem quite soft actually. So I went online and I've bought some harder grade carbon rods. Um, really cheap, lots of them, but they're too big. And so in order for these to fit into the, uh, into the tool, I actually have to grind down the end a little bit. It's a little bit messy, but uh, that's how I get the really large looking carbon rods into the end of the resistance iron probe. The black wire goes to whatever you want really. You can put a, uh, any kind of connection on the end. I've put on one of these um, small lightweight clamps that isn't serrated. Um, I've taken the rubber off and I've covered this one in blue just because I can spot it when I'm doing my soldering. And this is the, the negative terminal. So when, this is plugged, when the item is plugged in, um, both wires are ready to make a circuit. And as soon as you put the two together, you'll make a circuit and the current will flow and getting everything hot. Now they do say it comes with a foot switch, but actually all it comes with is this red button here. And what this does is this increases the amount of current coming down the circuit from standard to high. So without your foot on here, these are live. And with your foot on here, these are also live, but with more current. So even though they say it's a foot switch operated item, you can't run it um, in the way that I want to run it. And I'll show you what I've done to modify that. Uh, it also doesn't come with any kind of um, resting tool. So I've made a, 
a piece of wood with a, a clip on there and a um, piece of copper in there just to hold that still. So I wanted to run this hands-free in a way, so I've made my own foot switch which normally sits on the floor underneath the bench. Um, how this works is quite simple really. The red wire is the, is the hot wire or the live wire. So this is always on when this is plugged in. And the wire comes into the block, through the switch, and then back out again and up into to the probe. Now the switch is a push to make momentary 60 amp rated switch, which means that when I push it with my foot, the, uh, the red in and the red out are joined together by the switch. And when I let go of it with my foot, the, uh, the wire circuit is broken and the current flow stops. Underneath you can see I've uh, terminated my wires uh, onto these little um, spade clips, spade terminals, and screwed them in there and just made it a little bit neater on the bottom. So this normally sits on the floor and I can feel it around with my foot until uh, until I'm ready to solder and then, you know, with my foot I can push the button. The switch I got off eBay, it's uh, 60 amps, it's rated for, that's what it's rated for. It's normally used for cars or boats as a push starter. Um, again, they need quite a lot of currents for that. There's a switch on the floor, waiting to do its thing. And as soon as I want to do some soldering, I actually rest my foot above it like this. And then when I want to put the heat into the joint, I just press down on the switch and remove. So, very small movements. Now when I actually go to do a joint, I use uh, 1.6 millimeter copper wire. I've got some little track spacers here, which are the same diameter, and I use a little clamp. So I'm just gonna put the clamp into the right place. And I'm gonna do this solder joint here first. So here's the black connector um, with the blue identification tape. So I'll put that on there. And in my right hand, I've got the probe ready to rest onto here, first of all. That'll send, that'll complete the circuit. So this piece of copper will get hot between here and here. And some of the heat will go up onto the track spacer as well. In my other hand, I've got the solder ready to put on when the heat is there. So I've got my foot ready above the switch. I attach the bottom bit of copper and put the power on now. And I'll just put the solder onto the hot bit. The heat hasn't gone up the top, there we go, just touch the top. A bit more solder on there, let go of the switch. And as it cools down, I can then take off the probe from the joint. Let's do the back one. A bit more difficult to get in. I'm trying to kind of solder around the back. There we go, take the power off. And that one's done. Right, let's set it up so hopefully you guys can see a little bit closer. Okay, same thing as before. I've got my foot above the switch. Bring in the probe. This time I'm going to touch both pieces of copper at the same time. And I'm going to put the power on now. Oh, it's fallen off. It wasn't really very well set up. There we go. Put it back again. The power on now. Power off. There you go. You can just see it fade to dull, and when it's gone dull, that means that it's uh, it's all nice and set.
And there we go. Hopefully you find this useful. Um, six nice little joints, they just need cleaning up with a bit of wire wool and then they'll be ready for rolling balls. It's important to note that I don't use the resistance iron for any of my electronic work. For that I still use my traditional heat iron. This one's 25 watts and um, yeah I do all my electrical work with that and I've also still got my comedy massive super hot not super hot super large um, difficult to use 80 watt iron which I use occasionally for plate work or pipe work but I am beginning to go off this big time and I'm going to use my um, my brazing torch a lot more for, for getting a lot of heat into my big copper items. Um, I just love brazing as much as I love soldering so I'm going to mix and match the two together. So thanks for watching the video, I hope you've come here from one of my other videos, um, so I'm going to put a link to this video in all my others so that um, it hopefully answers the questions that you've all been asking me. What are you using to solder and where can I get one? So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to be the first to see my RBS4 videos when they start coming out. Um, it won't be long. I'll see you on those. Thanks for watching. Bye.